Nels are fast food for developers. They are comfortable, they are easy, they are fast. However, we all know the undesirable consequences of it. So in this video, I will show you how to model your domain, avoiding nulls by using the null object pattern. But first, let's talk about what's the problem with so many nulls in our code. And I will not discuss the exception that could happen because with the time and with the evolution of the tools, those are quite rare nowadays. Our IDEs naturally guide us to avoid them. However, there's a list with other problems that can come with the fact of using a null. And one thing that we know is that maintainable code tends to avoid code that is heavily based on flags. Why? Because when a, a piece of code that the given function, a given method returns a null, as an example, there's kind of a hidden assumption that will couple the object with someone that is using it. It's not well defined on the contract of those two, however, the coupling is there. So it will lead you to a contextual interpretation of what is happening. Depending on the context, you might need to behave in a given way or in another way. And also, if you think about it, a null is violating the single responsibility principle. Why? Because when you look at it and you see the most uses of a null inside of a code base, you will understand that we are using nulls as a kind of like a wild card that can be mapped to any type of object that we have inside of our code base. So if a single token can be used in so many concepts across of your application, it's clear that the responsibilities are not clear inside of your code base. So what can we do instead? We can use the null object pattern to avoid it. And I have here a small example to show you what I mean. That, by the way, you can grab it as a patron, as always. So let's take a look at this class. It's an order class, and here I want you to notice this property, the coupon. So when I have an order, I can assign a coupon code to have a given discount. And one thing that you can notice here is that this coupon is not required, so it can be null. When it's null, it means that I don't have a discount. And how do I have the discount applied here? So if I look into this folder discounts, you can find here a discount coupon that is an interface. So when a class implements a discount coupon, it needs to implement the logic to calculate the discount. And I have another class here that is an implementation of that interface that is this newsletter subscriber. So if you are a subscriber of the newsletter, you can use a coupon code related to that and that coupon code will give you access to 5% discount on top of your order. So if we go back into our order, we can see that the calculation of the total is first calculating the sum of the amounts from the lines, and then I'm checking, okay, if the coupon is null, I will return the total right away. Otherwise, I will call the coupon to apply a discount and return that price. Just an important side note, in a real use case, you will not have this method calculating the total, returning directly the value from the coupon. Otherwise, if you review the percentage assigned to that coupon, the price for previous orders would change. So we'll call something like this, but then store it in a given field. But for the sake of this demo, I want you to pay close attention to this part. You can see here that I have an implicit decision that if the coupon is null, I should return the total. If not, the coupon apply discount with the total. So now imagine that I have the same concept of applying these coupon codes to other types of things inside of our application. And now I need to replicate this logic of the coupon is equal to null. And on, on that case, I don't apply any discount. What can we do instead? What we can do is that instead of using the null here, let's basically say that I always have a coupon. And now there's one small detail in the design of our model that I want you to start thinking about it when you are designing your applications. Start thinking about the scenario when you have a null to think about if you can have a no object. For example, a no discount. What does that mean? It means that in our discounts, we could have a new class that I could, for example, call the no coupon code. So that means that no one assigned a coupon code to this order and I implement the interface. And in this case, it's quite simple. I simply need to return the total that I'm receiving. So no discount at all. And what's the advantage of this is that now everywhere where I'm using directly the coupon, I don't need to be concerned 
about nulls. So you can see here that now I can throw this away and I can simply return the coupon apply discount. And since now my model doesn't support null, what I can do is that in my constructor, I can say that by default, the order has the coupon, no coupon code. So if I rerun my tests, I have a scenario for the case with a 5% discount and another one for the case with no discount. And I didn't need to change anything to keep this going. But with the advantage that now I don't need to be concerned with the null. So every time that you have a scenario like this of something that can be null, think about if I can have the no version of that object. But this is not a, a solution, an easy fix that you can apply everywhere. Sometimes it will be over engineering. But before I go there, let me tell you that I'm working on a new course about clean code. And if you want to be one of the first to get access to many tips like these ones, make sure you follow the link to be one of the first to be notified with the discount codes once the course comes out. Let's pick the address as an example. Let's pretend that in this case, a client could create an order, but leave the address empty in case you want to go to the store to pick up the order. So if you use the same rule that I used before, you will think that, okay, if it's a, a no possibility of the address, I might have something like a no address object. So what does that mean? It means that inside of the address, besides the address, I will need to be able to extend it. And the possible implementation of that will be something like this. You will make your address abstract as an example, and then you will have an implementation of a no address and another one that will be kind of like a real address. What would it be to create a no address? So a no address will be the same as creating the address with all the fields empty. So by doing this, I would want to have something like this, okay? In the no address, I will call the base constructor and say, okay, the street is an empty string, the city is an empty string, the state is an empty street, the country is an empty string, and the zip code is also an empty string. But now the question is, What's the advantage of doing this and having one more concept that I need to handle when compared to doing something as simple as the following? You throw away all that implementation and when you want to represent an empty address, you would simply do this. Not only that, but you could go inside your address and create a factory. So every time that you want an empty address, Instead of needing to define this string.empty, string.empty everywhere, you could define something as simple as address.empty, or you could name it create empty address, something like that. Make sure you go to the description and follow the link that you can find there. So you can have early access to discount codes to my upcoming clean code course, where I'll talk about a lot of topics like this one. And only then, make sure that you watch this video right here.